Conduct in the City Council Chambers. Rules of decorum for the public. Members of the audience shall not engage in disorderly or boisterous conduct, including the utterance of loud, threatening, or abusive language, clapping, whistling, stamping of feet, or other, other acts which disturb, disrupt, impede, or otherwise render the orderly conduct of the city meeting infeasible. A member of the audience engaging in any such conduct shall, at the discretion of the presiding officer or a majority of the city council, be subject to ejection from the meeting per government code section 54954.3c. Removal from the council chambers. Any person who commits the following acts in respect to a meeting of the city shall be removed from the council chambers per government code section 54954.3c. A. Disorderly, contemptuous, or insolent behavior towards the city council or any member thereof tending to interrupt the due and orderly course of said meeting. A breach of peace, boisterous conduct, or violent disturbance tending to interrupt the due and orderly course of said meeting. Disobedience of any lawful order from the mayor, which shall include an order to be seated or to refrain from addressing the city council and any other unlawful interference with the due and orderly course of said meeting. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Taft City Council Successor Agency, Agency Joint Regular Scheduled Agenda for Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2024. The City of Taft Council meetings are being held in person with full capacity seating and are live streamed at www.youtube.com forward slash user forward slash City of Taft. Public comment may be made in person and also can be received per the following. Written comments may be dropped off in the drop box in front of City Hall. Comments may be emailed to the City Clerk at cityclerk at cityoftaft.org. They may also be made by phone to the City Clerk's office at 661-763-1222. Public comments will be accepted up until 5 p.m. the day of the meeting and all comments received shall be read into the record. We're going to begin this evening's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by myself, followed by an invocation from Pastor Sean Piper. So if you'll stand and join us, please. <clears throat> Salute and pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you because, as we just said, we are under you. We thank you for this city. We thank you for those that are charged with managing it and helping it to run well. We pray for the proceedings here this evening, that your justice would prevail, that you would give wisdom where needed, and that there would be peace and guidance. And we ask these things. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Sean. <coughs> <coughs> Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Mayor Knorr? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cryer? Here. Council Member Bryant? Here. Council Member Waldrop? Here. And Council Member Chavera is absent with notice. All right. Thank you very much. The first item on this evening's agenda is a certificate of recognition for a local family been in business for a very long time. They finally made that magic step into retirement. But since they're not here and we wanted to give them a certificate of recognition, we're going to ask to table this matter until such a time as they can be here and we can recognize them properly. So we will table item one, please. All right, moving on, item number two, study session, West Side Recreation and Park District, ELOP Summer Program. I think we have rec, uh, oh, we do, here he comes, the big guy. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> How are you guys today? Very good, Les. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, doing great. Les Clark, uh, Ford City, California. So um, proud to present uh, in front of the board 
uh, today on behalf of Westside Recreation Park District. Um, we actually have one of our staff members, uh, Stephanie Molina here. And uh, of course, my dad hit me in the side and said, make sure you tell him the real Les is in the house. So he's here. <laughs> Kansas so, City is well represented. That's, that's right. Well, yeah, that's right, for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I was listening to the decorum on the city council channel and, you know, many of those things, if, if you had probably two or three of those sentences, we, we would have never started a council meeting so back in the day. <laughs> so it was interesting. Um, you know, I wanted to just say a brief story because I thought about this. Yesterday I had a friend of mine and he said, uh, you know, I saw a guy uh, with no shoes sitting out in a parking lot and, uh, and he was complaining. And uh, as I was talking to him, I, I pointed to the guy uh, with no legs sitting next to him. <laughs> you know, uh, there's always somebody worse out there. But unfortunately for us, the district, we're the, we're the agency with no legs right now. And so we're trying to find our legs. We're trying to figure it out. And that's through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, last year, we ran 168 programs on four full-time staff members. Uh, and uh, we are still full steam ahead. Um, the uh, program that you guys have in front of you is exactly that. We're going full steam ahead. We're not complaining. Uh, we're not worrying. We're going full steam ahead. And we're trying to figure out how to pivot. Uh, and so um, on the agenda, uh, it stated that uh, we're going to talk about the ELOP program. In fact, we are going to talk about a version of the ELOP program, but that's Taft City Schools. That's not us. We're the full steam ahead program. And what you have in front of you is a comprehensive rough draft that has not yet been presented to Taft City Schools, but it talks about the full steam ahead program. Many of you guys are aware of what we have been doing in terms of partnerships. We've been circling the wagons with many different partners in our community. And you can look at the front page uh, and that'll kind of give you a little bit of a look. Uh, we didn't have enough paper um, to list all the partnerships that we have. Um, starting with Taft City Schools, Lori Slavin, Ms. Melissa Taylor, and the board at Taft City Schools, we've been working on um, currently a ELOP enrichment program after school. This is something that it, I'll explain in a minute um, that uh, is going to be a lot more comprehensive in the summer, and then we're hoping that that'll catapult into the, the next school year and then for the foreseeable future. Um, Chevron Synagro, um, uh, Chevron, uh, Megan Lopez, uh, has been a tremendous partner with the STEAM initiative. Um, if you had a chance to come up to Westside Recreational Park District and check out our STEAM room, uh, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and More. Not because I don't like math, but because there's much more going on at the district than meets the eye. Um, not only do we recreate kids, uh, but we provide enrichment opportunities. And I wanted to read our most current mission statement as it relates to Westside Recreational Park District. And that is a little bit of a change, and I know a couple of you guys have been on the board in the past. But our mission statement reads, at Westside Recreational Park District, our mission is to provide a well-rounded program of leisure, education, and workforce investment opportunities for our community, including youth employment opportunities, which is at the paramount of what we do. We achieve this through the acquisition and development of park and recreation areas, offering supervised programs and fostering collaborations with community partners. Um, you can see that there's a little bit of a change. We're not just programming uh, kids. We're not just programming senior citizens. We're programming two all the way to 93. And I promise you, uh, the young lady that's 93, I'm not going to mention her name because she told me not to say her age, but uh, she is a dynamo. Uh, and we're proud of her and we're proud of also our preschool program initiative and that program is aligned with first five Kern, which many of you do know and that initiative has been um, borne on by uh, the tobacco tax uh, they've partnered with us and allow our preschool to run free of charge for young people uh, and so so that's a great program crc uh, california resources corporations is, is another active partner with us uh, you have uh, nicole parra gabby and a multitude of other folks uh, with California Resources Corporation. And currently, um, they have agreed, uh, if you go up and look at our um, wiffle ball fields, uh, oil field and scully field, and the new soccer field that we're building to hopefully get 
some more folks recreating in our, that area, uh, they've agreed um, to give naming rights to that complex. And that's a five-year agreement. So that's exciting for Taft. And that soccer field will be ready at the end of May. And so we're excited to have that um, be a part of our community. And again, that's part of the pivot, looking for partnerships and looking for new and innovative ways to stay mainstream in our community. Um, Barry uh, Corporation. Uh, the Fox Theater was an initiative that uh, we uh, joined in. Uh, I got a call from your city manager, uh, Craig Jones, and he said, you got to do it. We got to keep this building open. And I think you guys are the ones. And I'm looking around going, we're already running 168 programs on four full-time staff members, but we're full steam ahead. Let's make it happen. And I'm proud to say that our staff has put that in the black in just less than a year. And so now we're operating, and it is um, supplementing some dollars that we've lost uh, for other programs that you know don't generate enough revenue to really make a dent in what we're losing in the property tax valuations um, due to the onslaught on the oil industry. Um, and that's important to note, and I'll bring that up here in a bit. But the Fox Theater is uh, amazing, and Barry Petroleum has came in, and they've allowed us to call one of our theaters, Barry Petroleum, or Barry Corporation Theater, uh, and we're doing an event there called Aspire, where we work with young people and try to get them to aspire to be better. And we've ran two programs out of there, and we're going to continue to run programs out of there, and we're going to continue to use that facility um, to make whole for the community. And again, circle the wagons. That's the approach. Uh, the Taft Chamber of Commerce has come in there and used that facility a few times. Um, we've had uh, the Tahone Tribe come in there and talk about their project that they have up on the hill, and there's been others that have been there as well. So we're excited. Uh, Taft College has really stepped up. Um, we have uh, uh, the coach, uh, Vince Mioka, who's in uh, the audience. Of course, uh, Taft College baseball has been a, really a staple in our community and stepping up as far as volunteerism and a multitude of other things. So that's been a tremendous partnership. But we also have Devin Doherty uh, in the trade school portion of it. Um, we are looking for ways, innovative ways, to work together. I'm proud that Taft College has partnered with us um, and is going to be holding classes at Westside Recreational Park District and paying to utilize those venues. So that's a, another important component of what's going on with Taft College. Not just that, but the ability for them to provide interns to us and ability to look at their programs holistically and try to improve. Um, themselves by partnering with us and, and making our programs better, but also making their programs better and making it a better staple for our community because that, that college uh, is an economic stimulator in this community. We want to make sure we continue to, to be positive in that area. Um, and Alyssa with the STEAM program, um, she has been tremendous um, and she's been a per tremendous partner in helping us kind of foresee what's going to happen with full steam ahead but also our chevron steamer with robotics and everything else that's out there it's unbelievable it was a great experience that i had the other day when we had the steam room uh open uh for the first time i was walking by a couple young people um, that i recognized but i had never seen at the rec center and you usually know in this town who the kids are that go to the rec center and who aren't and i asked the kids i said you excited about the steam room and the young man looked at me and he said, I'm excited about the rec center. I've never been there. And so the steam room has offered an opportunity for kids to want to go to the rec. It's not just sports. It's more. And so we went into the room. I'll be honest with you. I had a tough time getting the model out of the box. And this young man not only got the model out of the box, but built it within 15 to 20 minutes. And I learned more <laughs> than that kid ever did in the steam room. So it was pretty cool to see. Um, Holmes Western, Fred and Barbara have been uh, tremendous partners, uh, but more than anything, mentors uh, for us as we go through uh, these trials and these tribulations. And uh, as uh, Fred would say and my dad would say, iron sharpens iron. So being around those types of folks and many of you uh, sitting up there in the diocese, um, I'm appreciative of your friendship because um, iron sharpens iron, and that's how you get better. Cinegro. Uh, um, we've taken on the Taft Community Garden, and Cinegro stepped up and decided to sponsor that uh, in, uh, enrichment program. And that's a much-needed program. There's a lot of folks down there that rent out gardens, but it's also going to provide an educational opportunity for us in the very near future to become better and to pivot and to become more essential for our community. Uh, West Kern Oil Museum. 
Um, you know, I was talking to an educator today from Taft City Schools, and she said, you know, I'm ashamed that I never went there. I never went to the West Kernel Museum until I became an educator uh, because it wasn't pushed enough. Well, we want to partner with West Kernel Museum, and you'll look through this um, full steam ahead program. We want to partner with industry partners. We want to partner with Taft City. We want to partner with everybody in our community so we can, it's time to circle the wagons for the rec. We cannot do it alone. And that's when I say, go back to the leg situation, we have to utilize everybody in order to get from point A to point B. We can't do it alone anymore. And so this is part of that initiative and part of that uh, pivot. Uh, of course, Westside Healthcare District, Ryan Schultz and the gang, uh, they have really stepped up to the plate and they also understand the importance of not only workforce investment, but safety. Last year when our amazing Senator Shannon Grove uh, was, uh, gave us the dollars and cents to open the natatorium back up. Uh, we had probably 40 kids from Roosevelt School hop in the pool, and eight of them didn't come up. And our, our uh, lifeguards hop in the pool, and they saved them. And so Shannon called me, said, hey, the thing opened. What, what happened? How'd it go? And I said, well, it went good, but not real good. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, eight kids sunk like a rock. And she said, oh, my goodness, I cannot believe it. What did you guys do? And I said, well, our lifeguards jumped in. Many of them were Taft College kids, jumped in and saved those kids. And, uh, and they provided a, a needed service from that point on. We taught them how to swim. So we got eight more swimmers last year from the natatorium, which, as many of you know, that's a life-saving thing. But it also provides jobs for those kids. You know, part of this initiative is to provide jobs for kids. It's going to provide 30 summer school jobs for kids, kids that are going away to college, they want to come back into their community and make a, a decent wage. They want to put it on their resume. The rec has always done that. We may not be the big leagues, but we certainly are a route to the big leagues. I had a um, young people, a person the other day say, man, I'd really like for this to be my career. And I said, it is your career. This is the start of your career. And a lot of young people don't realize that. When they step into the rec for the first time, I know that uh, we were talking, we started at 14 years old at the rec many moons ago. They asked me to uh, fix skates and we found out real quick I wasn't very good at that. Um, but uh, the deal of it is, is that it's important to provide those jobs for those kids and, and to provide that workforce investment. The rec is much bigger than other rec departments. I was talking to some folks today and they were squabbling about Quimby funds and what they needed to do to try to raise funds to keep their district going. And I thought, gosh, if only if that was the only thing we had to worry about. And I'm not, uh, I'm not making that simplistic at all because all districts are having an issue and everybody's looking for ways to generate revenue. But we're not sitting back and worrying about things. I had a guy the other day I was talking to, I said, uh, I asked him a question. I said, what's the difference between worry and concern? In the good book, it, said that it says that worrying is a sin, but it says to be concerned. And I didn't know what the difference was. I mean, many of you may not know what the difference between worry and concern is. Well, a little bit later, I saw a guy spill a thing of water over on the table. And I said, don't worry. I said, just go get a rag and sop it up. Just be concerned that if you don't do it, that water is going to spill out on the floor and then you're going to have a lot bigger problems. So I came, to the, uh, I came to the conclusion, the difference between worry and concern is worry is reactive and concern is proactive. And that's what we're being. We're being proactive. We're trying to make the district better by circling the wagons. And that's what this whole thing is about. That's what this initiative is about. Adventist Health Bakersfield uh, has stepped up uh, and they're interested in talking about future partnerships along the way, which they realize our middle kingdom is important to the valley uh, because there's a lot of leaders that come from Taft and we want to continue with that trend. Uh, and of course, I, I would be remiss and I'd say the best for last is City of Taft. Your staff, Yvette, uh, of course, uh, City Manager Jones and even Chief Damon have all stepped up and they've said, we want to be shoulder to shoulder with you. I got a, an email from Craig just probably an hour ago saying, what do you think about this? They're thinking about us. They're helping us. And we run ideas off of each other. And we have partnerships. Uh, Damon and the police department have been integral in that. And their, their police officers group stepped up and said, hey, we want to help. We want to help your, not only your youth, but we want to help your weight room, we want to make sure that it becomes better. And so that relationship's been tremendous. And he's a stand-up guy. He's a friend. 
and he cares about our community, and as does Craig and Yvette and the multitude of staff here at the city of Taft, including you guys sitting there staring at me right now. I appreciate you, and I know that I can call you on a moment's notice. Um, I wanted to highlight a couple things that I want you guys to understand. Uh, I want to I acknowledge a longstanding partnership that we have, Westside Recreation Park District and you all. Uh, back in the early 1990s, uh, you folks came to the Westside Recreation Park District and said, hey, we got a heck of a park, and it's in the middle of Taft, and we're going to put some houses, we're going to develop, and that park is going to be an integral part of the growth of the community of Taft. And the rec said, we're in, let's go. We're shoulder to shoulder with you. At that point in time, uh, the city council had um, uh, decided that they were going to give us money in perpetuity to keep A Street Park going. I am proud of that park. I know you all are proud of that park. That park's having a tough time, though, because with development comes impact. And with impact comes money, dollars and cents. And so what I would love to do here in the future is add to an agenda item for, uh, to, to bring A Street Park to you to talk about the need for that park, but the importance to keep the gold standard going with that park. And maybe there's a possibility that we can further our partnership or enhance our partnership and get some more dollars and cents as it relates to that. Respectfully, I would ask that uh, be brought back at some point in time. Um, I also want to talk about uh, the need in our community. The need in our community has never been more great than it is now. And in the fact that we have picked up a multitude of different programs, volunteerism is no longer here. Those guys out there working the patch now are working 12-hour shifts. You know, back in the day, they were still working 12 hours, but they'd figure out a way to squeeze in the eight-hour shift, uh, uh, maybe a lunch to go down and help with the ball fields and, and get Little League Baseball going. And mom would hold down the fort while the guy went back to work. Mom and dad are both working now. It's not the same world that we used to live in. People are having to pay more for bills, and it's a tough time. We picked up Little League, not because Little League, the volunteers couldn't do the job, but we picked it up because they couldn't afford to do the job anymore. And so we were happy to take that on. We also took uh, the fields uh, that were being ran at the time by the county, and in my opinion, local control. Everybody up here uh, agrees with local control. I saw a Republican committee here. They, they, their marching orders are local control. We decided to take that little league on, and we have, and it looks great. And, uh, but that comes with a cost. Uh, without us, Little League would go away. We also took on uh, the natatorium swimming pool from Taft City Schools, and that's been a tough initiative. But we're going to continue with that, but we have, we have to be proactive every single year to make sure that that thing continues to flourish. The Taft Fox Theater, which I've already mentioned, uh, Babe Ruth Baseball, uh, the Junior Football League, uh, we've taken that on because volunteerism went away, and also the cost has been astronomical as it relates to football because now you have concussion protocol and you have a multitude of things that, that go into football, and, and the biggest thing would be insurance. The cost is very prohibitive. Many rec centers don't do it. Um, so that, that need for their partnership with Taft High School, because without JFL football or the Wildcatters, as we call it, uh, the high school football team isn't going to be as, as successful. So those are things that we're looking to partner with here in the near future. Um, the Recreation Gymnasium, at one point in time, um, it was the foundry. And there was a local church group that took that on. And they took a lot of weight from the district. And they ran a very, very good program. We've taken that on. And, of course, as many know, there's a cost that's attributed to that. Um, AYSO soccer is, used to be volunteer ran. It no longer is. We've also taken on that. Um, Aspire, Berry Theater, Chevron Steel Room, and now uh, the Community Garden, to name a few. So as you can see, we keep growing but the dollars and cents keep getting condensed down. Pumping units are not going up and down like we want. They're going up, or they're going down, but they're not going up. And you guys understand what I mean by that. And it hurts our community. Uh, whether they're intended or unintended, the consequences of what's going on in the oil industry affects us special districts. I'm the Kern County Special Districts Association president. We have 94 special districts in Kern County. 84 of them are active. And that's plus or minus one or two. 
uh, and every one of us are having a tough time. If you look in Taft, uh, I remember sitting up on that diocese 20-some uh, years ago, and a guy came up, and he sat right here, and he said, I got a question, and you know we couldn't answer because it, it was public comment. And uh, he said, "My question is, why the heck do we got a mosquito abatement? I've never been bit by a mosquito." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't know what you have in a special district until that special district's gone. Because I promise you, if Westside mosquito abatement goes away tomorrow, everybody's going to know real quick why we had a mosquito abatement. Same thing with the cemetery district, Westside healthcare district, West Kern water district. West uh, and West Side Recreational Park District. We do our job and we are essential, but we're not deemed essential by the state of California. So we have to rise and, and, and fall by the ebbs and flows of the taxes that come in. And I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and tell you, and I, I met with a rancher not long ago and, and I said, you know what? Uh, don't ever worry about me, because he asked me, he says, are you gonna try to raise parcel taxes? Because I see you out there whining. That's just how ranchers talk. It's either are or aren't. And I said, well, I'm not whining. And he said, well, I just want to make sure we're not raising parcel taxes. Parcel taxes are not fair. It's not a fair tax. And this guy will never, as I'm a district administrator, ever want to raise a parcel tax because I don't think they're fair. One vote and you own all the parcels. It doesn't make any sense. So that's another way we can generate revenue, and we're just not going to do that. We're going to ask business, and we're going to ask this community to go shoulder to shoulder together. Um, our, our impact uh, on the community is tremendous. Our rec programs that are being ran are being ran uh, as good as they can be. We don't allow any kid to walk away and not participate in the program. So we get four kinds of coaches. We get the coach that's great and has all the intangibles uh, and is very, very uh, experienced. Uh, we get the coach that doesn't have all the intangibles but shows up on time and is disciplined. We get the coach that uh, is, uh, shows up on time, uh, doesn't know much about the sport, and is somewhat disciplined. And then we have the young 16-year-old kid that we're trying to train. But we never turn kids away because the importance of recreating a child far outweighs the negative that it would have if a kid isn't participating in sports. You go over to some of these rural neighborhoods in, uh, in Kern County, and you find out when they, if they have a rec center or not, you're going to see juvenile delinquencies here. Our juvenile delinquency is here. Chief and I were talking about that the other day, though, because it's, it's rising a little bit. But we have to combat that because we work together and make sure that we're circling the wagons, and we want to continue to do that. Um, the Full Steam Ahead program, as I mentioned, is a program, it's very comprehensive, and I have a rough draft in front of you, and I'm certainly not going to try to read it all for you, but you guys are active partners, and you're elected officials in this community. I would be honored if you would read that and provide input, feedback, or even give us a boat of confidence moving forward as we try to enrich kids' lives and get into the city schools in a partnership agreement. Um, it, we're, we're going to, uh, again, provide workforce investment, and we're going to provide opportunities for kids to get better. The neat thing about the Full Steam Ahead program, working with Taft City Schools, part of the initiative is any kid uh, that's involved in the, um, in the Full Steam Ahead program, or ELOP, uh, is going to get in the summer free, <coughs> free of charge. Uh, and I say free of charge, I use that word loosely because it's going to cost some money. And the city schools and us are going to have to figure that out along with other partners. Uh, but we're going to get them in free to the natatorium and in the rec center for the summer so we can mentor them after school hours, which is essential to make sure kids are staying out of trouble. We come up there, I scob the noggins of hundreds of kids a week. And it's just, you know, or I love on them, you know, because it's necessary. Kids need one of two things. They need discipline or they need love. And that's just the way it is. And the rec has always provided that. I in no means, shape, or form am I saying we're perfect. But doggone it. If you don't think that we are, step up to the plate and help us out. Be the solution to the problem. Don't be the problem. And that's what we're asking for, and that's what we want to continue to do. Um, I uh, want to express a multitude of gratitude um, to all the agencies that I would spoke about and all the agencies that I haven't spoke about. And I want to thank you guys um, for allowing me the time to speak uh, tonight. What I'd like to do is just offer any questions, open it up for any questions that any of you might have as you look through this document.
All right. Well, Les, very comprehensive, but you're, <clears throat> you're right. You cover a lot of bases and you touch a lot of lives. There's a lot of corners, and it's not just a square with four corners. The community has lots of corners. So uh, I will, I'm, I'm sure everybody here has a question for you, so I'm going to start with Mayor Pro Tem Cryer. Please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've known Les and his father for quite a few years and stuff, and the watched the, the program at Westside Rec have been doing from the time that you took over to, what, to the present time, and you guys did a lot of good work in this community. Children come first, our young adults come first, and uh, you put our community first on a lot of different things, especially taking on all the different, um, the fox and the garden and all the other programs you're putting on. I know it's very appreciative because, like you said, if you weren't here, this town would surely be missed and, and wouldn't realize it, but, but what the good work you've been doing, it, they, it's, it's taken for granted. Taking a lot of good granted, and I, I, I really don't have a question. I just wonder how you can, like you said, for the set members you have, is how you get everything done. You know, it's amazing. So you have a really good, structured um, teamwork you have going on there, and it's very well appreciated. And um, I, I can't, I can't say enough. And I, I, I know the A Street uh, Park has been an issue for a few years and stuff. And I'm hoping that the council in the future would do something to rectify it and on that for you to make it easier because it's important that the extra money that you get is going to go right back to our to our, our, our city and, and to the youth and stuff. So it would be a, it's a great um, uh, project endeavor that you guys are doing. And I wish you can do more, but, you know, you can't. You're... you're, you're, you're you're, you know, you got only how much money you have to spend, and and you're squeezing those nickels out pretty darn good, and it's very well appreciated. And that's all I have to say, Mayor. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Councilman Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Les, I'm going to tell you this, and I mean it to you personally, but also to every person that uh, you represent as the figurehead of the Westside Recreation and Park District, from your staff to your board members and to anybody that just happens mm -hmm. to participate up there. We appreciate you. We are thankful and blessed to have folks like you guys in the in the the in our midst doing these things because like you said if it wasn't being done we sure as hell notice but because a lot of times we we just expect it it's what we have here we almost take it for granted and i apologize for that that's kind of human nature but we appreciate all that you guys do uh, you listed off a number of programs that i've been involved with outside of that we couldn't have done what we did uh, without your partnership, whether it's you know junior football, Babe Ruth, Little League, whatever it is, you guys have taken all those things on. They used to be run by volunteers. I mean, volunteerism, uh, for all of its purposes, has died, and it's sad, but it's uh, indicative of where we are societally, not just here in Taft, but anywhere across the world, across this country for sure. But we appreciate you guys very much. Uh, and I think you said it perfectly. If you don't like it, folks, here's a volunteer application. There's plenty of opportunity to get out and get involved. If you really want to make a difference, you be the change you want to see. Otherwise, sit down, shut up, and enjoy the ride. We appreciate you guys very much, Les. Good luck with the ELOP and SEMA program, and uh, I'm here to support you. Thank you. All right. That's from Waldrop. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I'm very proud of the Westside Rec and their whole group there. They're doing uh, so good. They got a great start going here. I thumbed through it, and there's a lot of, lot of stuff here, and it's going to take a lot of help and money, and hopefully... As we go, that we can figure this out together and uh, make it better. I'm proud of all of you. Thank you. Thank Even you. the mayor of Maricopa, uh, Port, Port City. City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Port City. Yeah. Port City. <laughs> <laughs> Cut me two tries. It's been a long time. I ain't played ball with him. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. He has a great deal of influence. He cannot be confined to just Ford City. I see that man all over the place and, and just about every political uh, event I attend. And, and he's respected and he has dedicated his life. Uh, so just as his son is and has been for quite some time, it's no secret that not just the special districts and not just the city of Taft, not just our industry, our valley is under attack. I read one of the most recent studies coming out of Sacramento and their recommendations, and this is coming from government agencies out of Sacramento. And they say that in order to deal with the groundwater issue, they're going to have to fallow plus or minus a million acres of prime farmland in the San Joaquin Valley. On top of that, 
That that they don't fallow, they need to grow crops that use less water. Those crops also employ fewer people and provide less income. But that's not that worry, that becomes our worry. And that's the same group of people that want to make those decisions about making demons out of an industry. And it's funny because when COVID came out, I don't know if you all remember, but our governor said all oil and gas workers were essential workers. In other words, the boogeyman was right outside the door and that was what they were preaching, but all you oil workers, you got to go out there and do your jobs because we need you. And then uh, as we had not even emerged from the COVID nightmare, what did we use in order to be able to emerge from the nightmare? We had plastic between us and anybody we wanted to do business with. If you wanted to go to the bank or you wanted to go anywhere, you had to have plexiglass. Last time I checked, that was uh, made from petroleum products. But not to beleaguer the point, but we are. And you are absolutely right. Our industries, our way of life, our opportunities are under attack. And it's coming from Sacramento. And it's no secret. And it is, and we continue to fight day in and day out every single day, just as surely as your staff continues to fight to squeeze a nickel and get one more program in there and include one more child or one more 93-year-old young person. So uh, we're very, very grateful. We appreciate you coming before the council, and this discussion will go on and on. Well, I appreciate it, Mr. Mayor and, and council, for the time. and. I did want to point out one thing that's important is that if you look at our logo, you see a pump or you see an oil derrick and it leans to the left because it's been the heartbeat of our district for 75 years. And uh, we're proud of our industry. We're also proud of our industry partners and uh, the REC, uh, we strive for the gold standard. The community deserves the gold standard. They don't deserve anything, but we're not perfect. We want people to step up. We want people to help and we want to make sure that people know that we're not perfect. Uh, but uh, I appreciate that. Our board of directors at Westside Recreation Park District is proud, uh, and they're uh, full steam ahead, believe me. So thank you guys so much for your time, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you. Thank you very much, and thank your staff as well. Thank appreciate you. it. <clears throat> All right, next up, item number three, citizens request public comments. Comments are to be received as stated in the above policy. This is the time and place for the general public to address the city council on matters within its jurisdiction. State law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. Council may receive comment and set the matter for a subsequent meeting. Please limit your comments to five minutes. First up is going to be Vince Mayoko of the Taft Republican Assembly wanting to discuss the upcoming election. Is that correct, Vince? That is correct. That is correct. Um, Mayor Knorr, Councilman Cryer, Bryant, and Waldrop, thank you for this time. Um, I am Vince Mayoko. This is Lisa, and uh, we are the president and vice president of the Taft Republican Assembly. <clears throat> but if I can ask you, I want to put on my Taft College hat just for a moment before we talk, I put on my Taft Republican Assembly hat. Um, to give you an update, Les kind of set it up for me, literally put the ball on the tee for me. Uh, today we played the number one ranked team in Northern California, Fresno City College, 25 and five record. The Cougars are down eight to four in the seventh inning. We find a way to tie it at eight, eight. And Taft High School's very own Jackson Berry is a three run homer. Mm. And the Cougars take down the evil empire that is Fresno <laughs> City College, 11 to eight. So, go Cougars. Go Cougars. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Carlos reached out to me about a month ago about addressing some issues that I think really need to be looked at here in our community, and not just the community of Taft. I mean, we're talking every community in our nation. The amount of people that actually <laughs> vote in elections is at an all-time low. All-time low. The previous election that we had, the primary election, um, I, I, less than 50% of people actually voted that were registered voters. Um, obviously, I am the president of the Taft Republican Assembly, and Lisa is the vice president. And I gave Michelle so, uh, some information regarding what the Taft Republican is about, what our bylaws are, what uh, the California Republican Assembly, which is the oldest 
grassroots organization in California. And uh, President Reagan called the California Republican Assembly the conscious of the Republican Party. And some things that we've done in our short time as a charter of the CRA here in Taft is we've had a number of different events where we've raffled off handguns. And we know that uh, in today's climate, uh, everybody needs to be armed. They need to be armed. And we've, we've had a couple auctions with that, a couple raffles with that. We've uh, run a number of different uh, events where we had um, um, hosted at the time, Brian Dolly, who was a, <clears throat> a uh, candidate for the governorship in 2022. We were able to bring him as, as a guest speaker and allow the people of, of Taft to meet a, uh, a candidate. Uh, just recently, we had a uh, Meet the Candidates Night at Westside Recreation, where we brought in, I think, 12 or 13 local candidates that were running for office to give the voters of the West Side and Taft an opportunity to meet who they're going to who they're going to see on the ballot. And we're planning on doing the same thing again this upcoming election in November. We're going to do another Meet the Candidates Night. So I think it's very important as a as the president and the vice president of the Taft Republican Assembly, we want to serve our community. And we want to give our community the tools that are available to meet candidates that are running for office this upcoming election in November. I mean, this, right here, the Taft, Taft City Council. There's going to be, I think there's three, two or three seats that are going to be up for election um, in November. Taft Union High School Board of Trustees is up for re-election. Uh, Taft City Schools. My beloved Taft College has a several uh, trustees that are going to be up for election as well, too. So it's important that we give our local people an opportunity to understand the importance of, of voting. Um, I know often people will say, well, my vote doesn't count. It doesn't matter. Well, you want to guarantee that your vote doesn't matter? Don't vote. That's, that's a slam dunk right there. If you don't vote, then guess what? Your vote doesn't matter. Okay, so it's important that people play the the privilege that we have as Americans to vote. There are a number of countries worldwide where they they don't vote, or if they vote, there's only one candidate, and if they don't vote for that candidate, candidate they probably end up in a gulag somewhere in Siberia. So it's important. And, and what we're trying to do as a Taft Republican Assembly is obviously we're affiliated with the Republican Party, but we want people to register to vote, become voters, and to become and to vote every election that they possibly can. Um, a couple things here I have written down here on my, my phone. It talks about uh, how something that, you know, this upcoming election, I, I think, in all honesty, it's one of the most important elections in our nation's history. It is. This absolutely is. I mean, can we honestly be happy with the way our country is going right now? I mean, Mayor Noor talked about how the state of California is. I mean, California state, the California is a train wreck, too. So you got our state, you got our country, and there's some issues in our county as well, too. We need people to vote, okay? Um, Lisa, anything you want to add to, to any of that that comes to mind? I just want to say thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to allow us to come in and express uh, what we do, who we support, how we uh, want to be part of our community and, and do the betterment for our community. Because I've lived here most of my life and I love my, my town and, uh, and I want to do what I can to support our town and our, especially our oil industry and to speak out for our oil industry because that's what we have been surviving on since inception. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Well, thank yeah. you both for yeah, coming. Yeah, one, one last thing I would like to add, too, is, is obviously it's just me and Lisa can't do all the legwork. We want people to join our cause. And, you know, I encourage people that are here in attendance or people that might get an opportunity to see us on, on, on television that, that if you truly want to make a difference in our community, um, join our cause. Help us help our community by getting people registered to vote and getting people to the polls and make sure that they're voting when it comes to November. And I say November, there's obviously a special election in May as well too, okay, that people need to play a role in as well. So thank you for your time. For the, your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, go Cougars. All right. Thank you both very much. Uh, we cannot address this as uh, this is public comment, so it's not a matter on the agenda. But I will tell you, and it's, it's public record, 
this dais and the gentlemen that sit on this dais have encouraged the public to get involved, get informed, and exercise their right to vote every single election that I've been a part of this group. So uh, I believe that we, we definitely agree with that wholeheartedly. Thank you very much. All right, next up, council statements, non-action, item number four. Oh. oh, there's another one. I beg your pardon. That's right. Jacob Ellis. Jacob, I'm sorry. There you are, young man, sitting there so patiently. And Jacob wants to talk about illegal dumping issue around the city of Ta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Jacob Ellis. I've been a lifelong uh, resident of Taft, and I wanted to stand before you guys tonight to kind of shed light on a pressing concern, all the illegal dumping that's uh, plaguing our community around Taft. Um, in Taft, our fields and outskirts suffer from the blight of trash as individuals resort to dumping household waste, construction debris, and other sort of items along roadsides and within our fields. Rather than utilizing the designated dump site, such as our Taft dump site, to uh, dispose of those. This unsightly issue is not only tarnishes our landscapes, but also poses an environmental hazard. The problem extends to areas such as Valley Acres, Dustin Acres, Derby Acres, McKittrick, and Fellows, where back roads that are attended for family outings are marred by the sight of discarded waste. My personal journey into this began in Dustin Acres, where I live, where I witnessed trash scattered across fields around my home. It has encouraged me to take action and alongside like-minded individuals, I join efforts to clean up those dumping sites. However, I bring this matter not just to your attention, but to the wider community around us. Together we can organize cleanup efforts and rally support in order to help eliminate this issue. Westside Waste Management's bulky item cleanup days offer a vital opportunity for the community members to dispose of trash responsibly, free of charge. I urge everyone to seize these occasions, not only for personal waste, but also to help it clean up these illegal dump sites or legally dump sites. And also, for those unaware, the Taft dump site operates throughout the week, except Tuesdays and Thursdays, offering free disposable for household trash, recyclables, electronic waste, green waste, and more. Even for items that occur in fees, such as construction waste, the cost is minimal, unless you're hauling a large amount. But most of the time, if you're disposing something, it might not be a heavy load, and the cost is weighed by the ton, so it won't cost you a lot to dump it. And this also, sh um, Shows, shows the community that it's, it's a responsible disposal that's both accessible and affordable to the community. Um, my message tonight underscores the urgency of addressing these issues before they escalate to a much more serious issue. I implore the community to heed this call to action and contribute however possible. Together we can transform TAF into a more beautiful place free from the blight of illegal dumpings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, esteemed council members, and attentive audience members for your time and consideration. I look forward to seeing the community come together to target these issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacob, for taking the time to come before the council and discuss it. It's a critical issue, and it's not just a city issue. It's a countywide issue because, you're right, there are laws against that, and those that break the law continue to do it. I, I have chased them down myself, and property that I own has been the victim of that, and it's a scourge. I agree. So thank you very much for coming for the council because you're right, it's everybody's responsibility. Thank you. Okay, now then, council statements, not action. And I'm gonna begin with you, Mayor Pro Tem Cryer. Thank you, Mayor. That's been a while since I've been for- I know, I'm changing it up. <laughs> <laughs> that you have. <laughs> Get me off guard here. I have to get, my, get it straightened out. But, you know, we talk about a lot about California, all the politics that's going on, good, bad, or indifferent. But I think we are going the worst way possible. A lot of us on the, on the council attends meetings other than here on the council to sit in here. And I was at one uh, this morning and stuff. And they're still trying to push, you know, no burning of, of, of uh, barbecue grills outside and stuff, trying to promote that, trying to sell it to us. And there's a lot of uh, uh, rejection on it, but they're trying to push real hard. And that's the American way. It, barbecuing, for, you know, we have our Fourth of July issues, uh, having barbecue with family together, and and, and our fam as a family barbecue with friends. You know, that's something that's a tight-knit deal to, uh, that we all do, but they're trying to, they're trying to eliminate that. Another thing that's been brought up is about fireworks. 
all the pollution <laughs> that the fireworks do for, for, the, uh, for the short time period. And that's been an American condition that goes back to our founding fathers and our, and our Constitution. It goes way back. You know, it, 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 we're losing our sense of uh, patriotism and traditions that we have in our great country here, in our great state. And we need to, to put that in mindfulness. Uh, do we want to continue on that road? Or do you want to go ahead? Do we need to find new people to put in office to do the belief that we want to go forward in our traditions and our culture and stuff? I see that we're losing it. And, um, and they had a deal also in our presentation today is about um, lawnmowers, edgers, blowers, and all that nice stuff, how they're going to eliminate that in a few years. And I know Les Clark in the back, he was, he was, in, he was part of that group and stuff. You know, you know, they're, they're trying to tell us what to do and can't do, but yet you go to a, a rest area in the state of California or to their state building, what do they use? Gas lawnmowers, gas edgers, trimmers, and blowers. Yet, won't they practice what they preach? No, they want us to do it. So, you know, what's good for the gander should be good for the goose. And uh, there's other issues on there with pollution. They're saying that... You know, we, we came a long ways in, in uh, implementing a lot of different things and in, in controlling pollution and stuff. Tremendous amount. We have a chart there in our in our meeting there how much we went reduced it. I'm sure we reduced it down to at least 60 percent less pollution or, or more than that. But yet, the, the, we got all the low lying fruit, the easy stuff done. Now they might go for the higher fruit that's going to cost us taxpayers a lot of our freedoms. Give our gas stoves. Can't drive, have cut gas cars. Got to be a zero. Everything's zero emission. Got to be zero emission on there. It's impossible to do it. But they're going to go ahead and pose a tax. Uh, there was one they're going to do, but it's been rejected. They were going to put a tax of $125 on utility bills. If you're going to use $10 to $200, $500, $600, they're going to put a 225 dollars tax on it. But because 11 congressmen and a lot of uproar about it, it was uh, tabled. You know, put away, but they could do that later in the future. Put it back on there. It just everything it is to just to um, to make it our lives not as an American as it used to be as we grew up as our, as, as child and stuff. What's our future going to hold for us and our youth? It's not. This doesn't look good. And um, I just want to give an example. I, I, I use a lot of castings in my business. I buy a tremendous amount, and. Uh, yeah, I only pay like six dollars and some change for a casting, and this company got bought out by another company, and they had to get everything all to code because the other company's been there for a long time. Once you sell that, you got to change all the environmental crap and different uh, rules and regulations have to follow the thing. That six dollars and some odd uh, cent casting now cost me thirty-three dollars and some change now. That's a huge increase, especially when you, that increases this one part alone, $400 more per part for doing it. So I had to pass that cost savings on to other. It's because our government is just not uh, favoring our own business here, our own state. I'm having to go to Washington, to a town called, a city called Spokane, to meet with another foundry there. They already got my molds and stuff and everything to get my cost down. So I got chased out of California from buying stuff here locally. Now I have to go out of state, and we're still probably employ, you know, employing more people, and the money goes there. But they're taking away our um, way of doing life here, doing business. We're, we're just going to $20 minimum wage. The government's going to win. See, California is going to make more money, not, not because they can do it, but they can tax you the first thing, because it's a higher tax bracket. They think you're going to make more money? Heck no, they're going to tax you more, or the people who are getting more money on under $20 an hour at a fast food place. The federal government's going to get more money, too, because it puts them in a different tax bracket. And raise the price of their product, have to raise their price of their product, because like I have to raise my price of my product on, on all I'm having to do. But what hurts the most in this, in, in here is the people who are retired who are on fixed income. How can they absorb the high cost of food because of our... Uh, government is trying to impose on us to make it that uh, all the people are trying to be, be $20 an hour. That's a lot of money. For my deal, $20 an hour is a lot of money. But it's going to hurt 
all the ones who are on fixed income. We need a change in our state. We need to go in a different directions to be more pro business, pro family, and pro I'm gonna say it, American. We're losing our culture. We need to do that. And I'm and that's what I have I have to say on that matter. And a couple of things I wanna say is that you know, if, if the people who are interested in the Tab Republican Assembly, they meet on a second Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. at the uh, local pizza par uh, factory and stuff. They do have good pizza there, I can tell you that. I'll enjoy it, and uh, a little shout out to them. But if the people are interested, they can go on that date. And another thing, too, when you go to the dump, make sure your back end is covered. If you don't have your cover over the trailer, they can find you for that. Am I, am I correct on that? Because uh, I, uh, I got in trouble already on there. I thought I was safe, but I wasn't. But uh, this one, I put that out there on there. But uh, I just got a lot to say, Mayor. I probably said a few words too many. But uh, you know what? That's a bunch of information, but you're right. If you're going to take a load of the dump, it's got to be tarped. That is the law. But you made me first, so I thought I could talk longer. <laughs> All right. There you go. Next up, <clears throat> let's uh, Councilman Waldrop. I'd just like to thank, uh, I really enjoyed tonight because we had so many people come down and talk and make us more aware of what is their problem that is our problem. And we need to help everybody figure this out. And I'm glad that uh, they're doing it when we're on, on the TV where other people will see it. So let's keep it up and uh, get more people down here to educate us better. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, sir. Councilman Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Ellis, how old are you? 22. 22 years old. So you're class of 21, maybe? Uh, 2020. 2020. Jacob, I, I've been able to, I've known Mr. Ellis here for at least 10, probably closer to 15 years. I've been able to watch Jacob grow from a, a kid playing sports into a young man. And Jacob, I'm so damn proud of you. I, I really wish that more locals, more youth, or even adults were more like you are. And I hope you take that for what it's worth. Um, not perfect, never will be, less said, but if you're working toward it, then it means you're getting better, not getting worse. And if we as society were more like that overall, we would all be better for it, right? We started talking about this idea of a community service, community cleanup. You kind of broached me for ideas months ago. He dipped his toe in the water only because he had to do it through, uh, through one of his courses at CSUB, right? And over the course of getting involved and, and spending his time uh, volunteering, doing basic cleanups, found out very much he not only was it rewarding but to himself but to the community so Jacob I'm very very proud of you so thank you for bringing illegal dumping up again um, so was it last weekend you spent time out there doing it and so multiple weekends uh, Jacob White is another local who's of his own volition gone out and said you know what hey people are, are lazy and not taking their stuff to the dump I'm gonna go out there and clean it up he does it on his own dime on his own time and I'm thankful for guys like you uh, I wish that more folks would just realize what you said the dumps free it's free, and it's open five days a week. Free, folks. You're, well, I wouldn't say free. I apologize. It's not free. We're paying for that through our uh, 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 waste management program. But it doesn't charge you any more at the gate to go out there and dump your stuff. And it's probably just as far to go out to the uh, Lost Hills Road as it is to go out to Petroleum Club Road. I, I'll, for the life of me, I'll never understand that. But for the love of God, people, just don't be lazy. But there's a common theme, right? <clears throat> we, we talked about volunteerism. We talked about people taking their, or not taking their stuff to the dump, uh, not voting. Apathy is uh, indicative of a problem societally. We see it with 20% voter turnout. That's terrible, right? With people taking, not taking their stuff to the dump and, and instead of using the same amount of effort to go somewhere else and just lay it go, that's terrible. People not volunteering, that's terrible, folks. We would have to be better as a society uh, because if not, then what we are going to sit up here and complain about from time to time is going to become commonplace. It's going to become the norm. Uh, what you don't condemn or combat, you condone, folks. I don't care if you're on the, looking at your ballot saying this doesn't matter. Well, then, you know what? If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. If you're not at the council meeting, then we might be discussing something that may be of importance to you. If you're not going to go uh, take the, the rec services, then you know what? Those services might be cut, and you're going to be you know, SOL when the time comes for that you want it again, guys. So please, for the love of God, get engaged. If it's important enough to complain about, it's important enough to engage about. Even if it's spotty, it's better than nothing. In today's day and age, there's electronic ways that you can correspond. I mean, you can send a public comment down here via email, folks. You can probably do it via phone. You can do that at any local government agency, but if, we'd love to have you here in the, uh, in the audience. You know, we don't necessarily want to be here to hear complaints, but if we're not hearing complaints, we think everything's hunky-dory. So 
get engaged, folks. Jacob, thank you very much. Les, as I mentioned to you in the rec, thank you guys very much. Um, and that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right. Not necessarily complain, but constructive criticism yep. is always a wonderful thing. But the first step solving a problem, any problem, is recognizing the problem. And to see young people like you come out here, take the time, and be engaged, it is. It's heartwarming. Because uh, it is. It's all our problems. We talk many, many times about just taking pride in your property. If you're going to be a property owner, whether you're in Dustin Acres or Valley Acres or Ford City or the city of Taft or Maricopa, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have the biggest house on the block. You can have the smallest house on the block. But pride of ownership shines through. Just a little bit of elbow grease. A little bit of pride goes a very, very long way. And pride of ownership and pride of your community, your organization, and yourself shows all day, every day. So city of Taft and the people of the city of Taft, I truly believe we are proud of who we are and what we are. There are those that are not. And we talked about that. Let's hope that we can change their behavior. So thank you all very much. That's all I have. Next up, item number five, department reports. Do we have any department reports this evening? Seeing none, all right. Item number six, city manager statement. City manager Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to point out again, the bulky waste cleanup is uh, Saturday, April 6th, 8 to noon at 10th and Main. We encourage everyone to bring your bulky items up there. And I totally agree with the illegal dumping. The city of Taft has a crew four days a week that does nothing but clean up illegal dumping in the city limits off of our uh, right-of-ways. That doesn't include private property in and around the city limits, so it is a problem. Um, we usually have somewhere close to a 40-yard uh, bin a week that we collect. Wow. Just people uh, discarding their furniture and things they don't want, they just throw them in the alleys and that's where they leave them. So, um, we encourage everyone also to use reporter concern for those type of things because we do like to catch those people because we do have abilities to find them and they can call the PD also for illegal dumping. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you very much, sir. Next up, city attorney statement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No all right. Thank you, sir. Future agenda requests this evening, I gentlemen. Have, I do have one. I'm probably sure you guys all probably don't be talking about on there. I just like to look at maybe uh, on the A Street Park look at if we can uh, anything we can do to, in, to increase the contribution that we do there as far as upkeep and maintenance that we have beyond what we uh, are doing currently now all right well that will have to go before the finance committee finance committee would be the time as we build our budget for next year yes it all right a line item in her budget all right very good thank you very much all right any others gentlemen nope that's a good one okay then Next up, consent calendar items 9 through 12. All items listed on the consent calendar shall be considered routine and will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the city council requests specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Any item removed from the consent calendar will be considered after the regular business items. Are there any items on the consent calendar that any member of the public would like to comment on? Seeing none, the items on the consent calendar are item number nine, the minutes for the March 19th regularly scheduled meeting. Item number 10, the payment of bills, some $68,000 worth. Item number 11, funding to the TAP Chamber of Commerce for the quarter of October 2023 to December 2023. Recommendation here is a motion to approve the 25% allocation of the transit occupancy tax to the TAP Chamber of Commerce for the quarter of October 2023 through December 2023, and find that the activity is not a project per the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, as set forth in section 15060C3 and section 15378 of the CEQA guidelines. Lastly, item number 12, compensation adjustment for extra help correctional facility food service workers. Recommendation here is a motion to adopt a resolution entitled a resolution of the City Council of the City of Taft approving automatic increases to the hourly wage of the extra help correctional food service workers impacted by the increase in the state minimum wage and find that the activity is not a project per the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, as set forth in Section 15060C3 and Section 15378 of the CEQA guidelines. Does any member of the Council wish to remove any of these items from the consent calendar? 
Hearing none, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve consent calendar items 9 through 12. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Mayor Pro Tem Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Council Member Waldrop? Yes. And Mayor North? Yes. And that's approved on a 4 0 vote with one council member absent. Guess what? That brings this evening's meeting to a close. At this time, I'll adjourn the meeting, and I want to thank everybody for participating and being here, especially both more or lesses. Good evening. <laughs>